God is saying, get a revelation. Get a revelation of the energized power of Holy Spirit in our lives. I said, Lord, I'm not happy with where I'm at. I want more. He says, you can have it. He said, press into it. You know, but God forbid we go over. God forbid we go over too long in prayer or worship. Or this is getting a little too long. When we were in Africa, that, where were they worshiping? Four hours? I'm like... I'm looking at my wine like, oh, Lord Jesus, how much longer are we going to keep going here? But you know what? Conviction. <laughs> What's that? We get convicted when we see other people yeah. doing something we're not doing. And I'm here, I'm thinking, oh, Lord. You know, and, and it was hot. It was sweaty. There were bugs all over the place. And they were dancing and rejoicing before Jesus because they got solar Bibles. And, I'm, and I thought, Lord, I need to get saved all over again. Because, I mean, really. And, and they, were, they, were, they didn't want to stop. And I'm like, aren't you hot? <laughs> you know, come on. Yeah. But I got so caught up in the natural because, you know, you're uncomfortable, right? And the Lord said, well, you stop it. And so, but, but I'm not saying we have to do that. Hey, you never know. When the glory falls like that, you just keep going on. But I get it. And, and the Lord knows our frame, right? But don't limit him. Press in a little more. You know, the enemy tells you, you can't pray. I can't, you know, without a show of hands, I know there are people that could say that I can't read the Bible. I, I just don't get anything out of it. Try. Don't let the enemy lie to you. You can read. You can read the sports journal. You know, you can, you, hey, let's look at how the football games and the basketball games and, and how they're filled. The stadiums are filled for hours. Look at boring golf. Sorry for all of those of you who like golf. How many hours, if you have insomnia, watch golf. Just watch it. It'll put you to sleep, you know. It's, oh, my God. But, I mean, look at the hours everybody spends watching that. If we can do that, we can pray. But, see, the enemy has this mindset in us. That we're, we're, you're not accomplishing anything. This is, you know, like, what are you doing? I mean, this happened to me. There's times like, oh, dear Jesus. You know, like, well, let me shop. <laughs> let me open up this thing, you know. I'm just being honest with you. But then it's like, no, no, Lord. And then you shut everything off. Listen, there was a time, like think about in the past, they didn't have worship music. They couldn't turn their internet on, right? They just had their Bible. And they had to pray. And that's what we did when we first got saved. We didn't have all this stuff to, to entertain us. Sometimes it's just good to turn everything off. And just you and Jesus in your Bible. Sing to the Lord, worship, decree the word, wait upon him. Then it gets to be where you have so much enjoyment out of it that you don't want to miss it. I don't want to miss my time in the morning. I really don't. You know, that's my time, first thing in the morning. I love it. And so, you want to say something? Oh, okay. All right. So, <laughs> all right. So now, here we go. Acts I do now. <laughs> we can go to the next verse, Acts 16, 16. Everybody okay? All right, I got to All right, so we know this. And it says here in Acts 16, verse 16, we're going to get free today, all of us. I just have to. It says here, it happened that as we were on our way to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination. That is a demonic spirit that was Python claiming to foretell the future and discover hidden knowledge. And she brought her owners a good profit by fortune-telling. She followed after Paul and us and kept screaming and shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God, and they are proclaiming to you the way of salvation. And she continued doing this for several days. Then Paul, being greatly annoyed and worn out, because she was trying to distract them of their purpose. They were trying to get the prayer. And she's trying to distract them and talk to them about and babble. Like a lot of times when you're doing deliverance, that spirit wants to talk and talk and talk. I just want to shut up. And so it says here, these men are servants of the Most High God. They're proclaiming to you the way of salvation. She continued doing this for several days. I read that. So then he turned and he said to her, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ as his representative, come out of her right now. And it came out at that very moment. All right? This Paul encountered this girl who was possessed with a spirit of python. That's what divination is. When you look up any information, I was going to look up, I was going to have snakes, I was going to have dance up here, and I thought, oh, Jesus, forget it. <laughs> um, Jensen Franklin, many, many years ago, put out a, a, a video, and we showed it to our youth years ago, about the python spear. You can probably get it online. It's worth watching. 
Anyway, but a python snake kills its prey by constriction and asphyxiation. Many times you may feel stagnant or you're backsliding, and the snake tightens itself around a trachea and makes it difficult to breathe. Sometimes you feel like, you know, your breath is taken away. You know, you, you just feel like, oh, all the, the joy, everything's been taken away from you. This prayer-hating python spirit drew attention to Paul and Silas. It tried to distract them from their apostolic mission. Well, they prayed and they worshiped. They took authority of that spear and they bound it. So when you, a lot of times, well, let me not get ahead of myself. Okay. So sometimes you're feeling stagnant, right? Sometimes you're feeling dry. We're saved a long time. And I've had my moments of, oh, hallelujah, just flowing. And other times, like, am I saved today? Like, <laughs> like do I know Jesus? Has anybody ever felt that way, right? I mean, you get like, golly. That's not uncommon, but that's the enemy trying to shut us down. And it's like, I'm not praying, you know, like just, and, and you just feel very dry, right? And so that's his agenda, his coiling spirit. He likes to wrap his little slimy self around you in the spirit realm and suck the life out of you, suck your, the breath out of you, lie to you, cut off your life's line to God because he knows you get revelation to take him out. And so he wants to shut you down. That's, it works with a spirit of witchcraft. You might say, well, how is that getting in me? I, I don't know. I just know that it attacks us. So when you're feeling that way, take authority over it. I bind the spirit of python. I bind witchcraft. Because sometimes you don't realize. And you're, you're, st you're in it. And then it's like, wait a minute. I'm trying to pray. I'm trying to worship. But it's so dry. It's stagnant. It's not always the case. But a lot of times... It is, all right? So it wants you to compromise. It wants you to, you know, allow open doors to keep coming, right, so that it can lay its demonic eggs because it wants other critters to come in there too, all right? It wants to attack your finances. It wants you to be offended. It wants you to, to live a stinky life. That's, there's no joy, no abundance in Christ. In Ecclesiastes 10, 8, it says, He who digs a pit will fall into it, and whoever breaks through a wall will be bitten by a serpent. Where there's an open door that you allow and you keep allowing it in, it comes in, and it can bite you. All right? 